Hey, this is Jay. And this is Chelsea. Welcome to the Shifting Perceptions Podcast. We are bringing you inspiration to live a more creative lifestyle because our favorite people are the ones that choose the path less traveled. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 34th episode of the Shifting Perceptions Podcast. This is Chelsea. This week's episode was with blogger and former personal trainer, Alex Nerney. We sat down with him to find out how he went from a thriving personal training career to transitioning into a full-time blogging career with over 250,000 visitors coming to their blog monthly. In this interview, we got to cover what it can look like to realistically manage your expectations and the reality that most bloggers are not overnight successes. There's an almost torturous first six months of blogging or the poop phase, developing an avatar, Pinterest, finding variety in your business, and finally, the good part, how to monetize. From trading hours for dollars to accidentally shooting what looked like soft porn during his first blogging attempt, Alex takes us on his hilarious and very human journey of putting himself out there and learning something new. Don't mind all the penis talk in this one. We will make up for it with lots of birth talk down the road, I promise. This one is filled with serious wisdom and a lot of laughter. I know you're going to love this. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Jay Alders. And as you're listening to this very entertaining and inspiring conversation with Alex Nerney, I wanted to give you a link so you can find his courses, the ones that we talk about. There's a lot of great insights into this. And if you are an entrepreneur, you have an online business, you're thinking about blogging, you're thinking about creating a side hustle or how to monetize what you're already doing, this is an episode that you do not want to miss. And if you follow this link, jalders.com slash Alex Nerney, you can find his courses where he teaches people how to make money from blogging, how to generate more traffic from Pinterest, how to launch your blog. He has a course called Six Figure Blogger. And as we talk about in this episode, Alex is making over a hundred something grand a month from blogging and his online courses and his online efforts. So he definitely knows what he's talking about. So again, if you go to the link J Alders, that's J A Y A L D E R S dot com slash Alex Nerney. That's Alex N E R N E Y you will be taken to his courses and I highly recommend them. What else? So I'm working on two new band posters for summer tours of some huge rock stars. I'll be announcing and sharing that with you in the next uh, probably month. If you go to jalders.com, not only will you find art prints and apparel and all of the various forms that I sell my artwork, iPhone cases, beach towels, but I also have a free newsletter that goes out about once a week Uh, with creative tips and specials and sales and VIP event invites when I have shows. I've also been working on my book every day for an hour or two before the kids wake up, and I'm getting ferociously close to finishing. It's been three and a half years that I've been working on it, and I hope to launch a Kickstarter in the next month. And as of right now, the plan is to get it out for summertime. And if you are having a baby or know someone who is, Chelsea is a birth doula. And she is based out of New Jersey, but she also offers online consultations and courses. So if you are in need of an advocate or instructor for your birth experience, check her out on ohmmamasdoulas.com. If you're driving or at the gym and you forgot any of these links, don't worry. It's in the show notes. Go to shiftingperceptionspodcast.com and it's all right there. Let's jump in. Hey, Alex, what's up, man? Hanging out, man. How are you, Jed? Dude, we're good. We're uh, we're stoked to talk to you. I wanted to learn all your secrets in about an hour, so uh, be prepared to unleash <laughs> the fury. Awesome. And Chelsea, how are you? Today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. We're just going to over enunciate everything for the day. That's what Alex. Alex. Alexio. <laughs> Alexio. I call me Alejandro. Alejandro. There yes. There you go. <laughs> you know, when we were on our uh, our honeymoon, every time we went to Starbucks, I was Sebastian and Chelsea was Claire. We give up on our normal names because oh, no one can do I it. I love that. Yeah. I'd order my order my lattes and we, yeah. yeah. Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Alex, man, so I'm, I'm stoked. I've been waiting for like a, a month or so to have this conversation with you. I'm excited to share it with everyone. And in doing some... Alex, how do I pronounce your last name, Alex? 
Nerney. Nerney. So in doing some Alex Nerney research, I fell upon the Forbes article, and I want to know more about this Millionaire Fast Lane Conference. I want to jump into that because it seems like that's one of the pivot points for your career and for your mindset. And our show is largely about giving people some new information to do things a little bit differently. And it seems like from that article, at least, that was one of the big things for you. Yeah, for sure, man. Great research. So um, what happened was, this is kind of a crazy story. Um, So I was personal training at the time in Dallas. And one of my clients, I had read the book. I had read this book called Millionaire Fastlane. Incredibly cheesy title. Fantastic book. Yeah, like okay. you know, like it, it's it's bad. Like the guys, like you know, standing by the Lamborghini, like in the book. And <laughs> oh God, God, yeah, yeah. You're kind of your eye rolling the whole time. Funny thing though is meeting him in person. He's like super introverted, um, like not who you'd expect. Okay, but what what happened is I had this client, and he was like a part of the forum for this book. So there's like this. Uh, uh, forum for like really uh, engaged members of this community. And he invited me to this conference um, that they were having out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And I was like, all right. I mean, uh, you know, I, I remember thinking like, I, that sounds cool, but no, like, you know, I, I really don't think I want to go. And so I put it off for, you know, a couple months out. Were um, you like showing, last- I'm sorry to interrupt you. Were you showing like entrepreneurial interest? Like what prompted this guy to say, Hey, my personal trainer really should come to this conference. Yeah. Yeah. So I, we had been talking like business stuff okay. and things like that. And I was always kind of like dabbling in the entrepreneurship space. You know, I wrote my first book kind of like my first like little ebook right after college. Oh, so I was okay. always like doing random stuff. Um, but so we, we had, we had had some discussions and he was, uh, and so it gets to a week before and I, I'm like, all right, fine, I'll go. I, I don't know what pushed me over, but it was just like, uh, fine. And so I bought my ticket a week before the conference, um, did not save any money on flights. And the, and the funny thing was, is the guy I was going to go with, um, he suddenly disappeared. Oh my God. Like, li- literally, literally this week before we go, like he's just, he vanishes. And I'm like, I'm trying to call him. I'm trying to text him. I'm like, dude, where are you? And what had happened is he had had a buddy whose company in Silicon Valley, like went like crazy and they got series A and all this stuff. And he needed to go fly down there. He flies down there, works like 72 hours straight or something crazy and has a mental breakdown oh my God. and ends oh, up in like a, a hospital or something. Jesus. And I was like, wow. Wow. Oh. <laughs> You're not selling and, entrepreneurialism very well. No, no. And, and so, and like, uh, so I show up at this conference, I know nobody. Like, I, it's just me and all these guys, like, from the forum who know each other. And I'm just like, what's up? Like, <laughs> my, my friend is gone. I don't even know where he is. And we, I go to this conference, but it really had an impact because I just met a ton of people who were doing random things. They were not all like bloggers or entrepreneur. Like they were just doing stuff. Um, you know, they were all like in the entrepreneur space, I think in the making money online, but are right. just making money in general. But it was very inspiring just being around people like that and seeing that it could be done. Sometimes it's just almost like you just need to believe that it can happen. And that was such a pivotal moment for me. And that that's kind of what happened there. Well, so what was your first ebook about? I have to ask. It was a college guy's guide to getting ripped. <laughs> it <Yeah>. was, <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, I was a, I was a personal trainer okay. um, in college, okay. and I was like, well, I was really skinny going into college and and got in decent shape, and was like, this is what I'm going to write my book on. It was full of penis jokes, <laughs> um, <laughs> as it so, should be. So niche, so niche. Yes. <laughs> It, it's certainly uh, it's certainly not my my best work, but it is a fun one to look back on. <laughs> so after you left this conference, like what you were just a personal trainer, you done this, and then what was the next goal? What were you like moving towards after that? So the next goal was like I wanted to just make I wanted to turn my money from just being made like in person, um, you know, probably very similar uh, to your listeners, you know, who are you know artists or musicians or. Uh, people who are like kind of trading hours for dollars, I really wanted to turn that into sort of like a scalable income, something where um, I could make money without having to wake up at 5am to train my clients. 
So that, that was the first step was starting to build a website and just researching about um, websites. I already had known some about them, but it was more like I had gotten kind of serious about it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So what was that What was that first website? What did that look like? Was that about penis jokes and getting ripped also? Or? <laughs> it, was, it was in a similar vein. It was, okay. it was called Health and Happy Hour. Okay. And uh, the whole idea was, uh, you know, I, I like to drink and party and I also like health and fitness, you know, and so like, let's smash these two things together and try to try to make it work. <laughs> right. You throw in a penis joke and you're set. You're like, yeah, just instant a passive them, income. You know? <laughs> passive income here we come i could only imagine your uh your emails what they must have been like back then it must have been awesome <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and, and, and search was, engine history too i'm sure <laughs> it, was, it was uh it was a fun time um i remember i remember the big things of, about it were that um you know this is the time that my co-founder actually kind of got started working on the websites with me as well and mm-hmm. what we would do is we would go and um we would go on the weekends, go kind of, my dad would leave his house for the weekend. So it's sort of like a staycation where we'd go to his house kind of in the middle of the suburbs and um, drink heavily and write articles. And that was like kind of our, our thing. And then one time we were actually trying to create recipe photos. Um, and so like, you, you know, you need those like um, the soft box lighting, you know, yeah. to get like really good photos. And so like one time my dad came back from work and it just looked like we were shooting a porno. Oh my god! You, know, you, had, you had all these softbox lights everywhere, and like my shirts off, and like just, you're like, like flexing over the computer. Like here's Alex blogging. Yeah, for sure. And it was just like, wow, this is not a good look. Okay, so and but there's something interesting to be said here is that like this is everyone's thought is like I'm just gonna jump in, start a blog, and like I'm gonna make a million dollars on like my abs. On yeah, just on. <laughs> well, I guess yours was drinking and cooking, and that seems like a pretty good idea but then what does it look like when you jump into that space online did you get super overwhelmed by what is already out there we what happened was we learned very quickly that the thing that we might think is awesome (laughs) doesn't mean that everybody else thinks it's awesome right um and that was that was the really quick learning process was that just because I think something's cool or just because I want to talk about something doesn't mean that uh, other people want to hear about it or listen to it. Um, and that was actually a very big defining moment in what made us successful versus why that first blog failed um, was because we had learned that, you know, just because I think something's funny um, or just because like um, something is entertaining to me doesn't mean it appeals to like a target demographic or somebody who wants to read our stuff. So clearly there is an audience for six pack abs and soft boxes and penis jokes. So w- were you were you not monetizing well then? Could you have kept could you have made that work or you're saying it, it was just that particular niche that was was not necessarily thought out enough? I think it was this combination of like we didn't have like a target like avatar uh, okay. at the time. When we created health when we created our next blog Avocado, we really focused in on this is the type of person we want visiting this website. And so it was like, uh, I think that was the mindset shift. So why don't we explain to our audience a little bit about like what it looks like to develop an avatar? We'll just touch upon that really quick for everyone. Yeah, for sure. So really like how I heard it put best was like, you just want to sit down and imagine like the person sitting across from you and you want to give them a name and you want to, like almost have a discussion with them, like where you ask them questions where it's like, what do you do? Where do you work? How old are you? Do you have kids? Do you, um, what do you think about this? Like, are you a Republican? Like start like asking that avatar questions of, and you can design your kind of ideal person like that. Um, and give them a name, like, uh, give them, you know, something that's relatable or something that, uh, uh, something that you can easily remember. Because then when you create content, you can always think, with, what would Cynthia um, like this? Does this help Cynthia out? Um, when, you, when you create content like that, it can be... Is Cynthia your avatar, very Alex? Help. Uh, no, but... Uh, I was going to ask if she's hot. Cynthia is actually a successful client from Avocado. So she did uh, become our avatar okay. eventually. Got it. Yeah. So I won't ask if she's hot then. Um, <laughs> she's hot so, now. <laughs> so you decided to kind of jump ship on the um, the abs and and uh, six pack 
uh, blog and jump into Avocado. And so how long did that... What was the pro- early process of that like? Because I think a lot of people look at blogging either on either extreme. People look at blogging like, oh yeah, I can go blogging and making a bazillion dollars or bloggers don't make any money. And there's obviously a lot of middle ground. So what do what the first days look like if someone's listening and they're like, I'm going to create an avatar and start a blog? Yeah, for sure. So the first days are always... Um... Uh, their excite, their excitement. There's a lot of excitement around what you're creating, um, but then there's also a lot of disappointment because when you create something new, um, your expectations of how quickly people are going to come or how quickly uh, people are going to be really interested in what you have to say um, are oh, they're usually a little bit grander. So, like you are usually comparing yourself to everybody else. So when you don't get, you know hundred thousand dollars or whatever you're whatever you're looking for it can be kind of hard because um, your initial expectations can usually be a bit off uh, so what I tell people is like there are kind of four phases to success one of them is this poop phase and, <laughs> and, and really it's like it, the reason why is like it, it's uh, where we wrote this article and it really resonated with people it's like everything you do is poop like your blog posts are poop the <laughs> articles that you write are poop. No, n- nobody's interested because you, you haven't learned the skill set well enough to like design anything great. Uh, right. So you have to go through this poop phase for like at least like a while, like, you know, it could be six months, could be a year. Uh, for us, it was a good um, five, six months of, um, you know, just no real results. We started to get readership by the end of those five, six months, but um, where you're just producing content and just like, well, nobody's here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, so the goal, the first goal is just like making rich content, right? So getting it filled with stuff. And then after that, let's talk about, because I think you're really talented in the webbing out into like the Pinterest, the social media, the all of that. So then what's the next phase with all of that stuff? So the next phase is like um, this. Uh, so you're, you're getting people to your blog and to visiting you uh, when you're moving through the levels of the poop phase, if you will, like <laughs> part of it, you're, you're your ability to create content will get better and better, right? You're just developing skills. It's not something more complicated than that. So the more skilled you become as a writer by practicing writing articles, uh, eventually your, your level of skills will grow and you'll get to a certain point where they're good. Um, and when that happens, you will start to get traffic because uh, if you are creating the content that people want and people need, um, like I was talking about with Health and Happy Hour versus Avocado, where we're creating articles designed around our specific avatar. Um, One of the big things that we started doing was featuring that content on Pinterest and Pinterest uh, and blogging are kind of peanut butter and jelly. Uh, They work really, really well together. Not all social media uh, fits um, blogging and, uh, you know, video content's great on YouTube, you know, not as great on uh, different platforms. Um, So, you know, you kind of got to fit the content to the medium Uh, that you're teaching from. So like Pinterest is really great for blogging. So we started to feature articles on there. And if you're creating great content around the specific avatar, um, that's when you can get people uh, to visit your, your blog and your website. So this initial rollout of like writing and all of that, give us an average of how many hours per week you guys are throwing into this at this point. Um, All of our spare time. That would be the honest, the honest thing would be every spare second. Yeah. I mean, we just, you, you know, you can't like, not every day is the same, right? Uh, I, I know you guys from parents understand this probably better than anybody, right? Like Big time. sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. the kiddo has a problem, you know, and your your day gets centered around talk, taking care of that problem, right? I'm assuming I'm not a parent, but. Yes, problem is putting it lightly. Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So like not every day is like perfect. So I, I don't like try to like put in a certain amount. It's just all the spare time that we had. So, you know, as a personal trainer, right? So. Uh, I'd work early in the mornings and late in the evenings. And so in the middle of the day, uh, when I would have that um, time, I would work on the blog, right? And then um, at night, I would go personal train. And then, you know, Lauren was a CPA, so she wouldn't, uh, so she'd work most of the day and then come home at night and kind of work on the blog. And then on the weekends, we would work on it as well. Um, So we were just throwing all of our spare time uh, that we had um, from the typical work life into it. So how do you t- when you're when you're teaching people and you're kind of explaining like what this looks like in the beginning like there's really no sugarcoating to the beginning phases of just 
you're going to be working your ass off for no reward for the first yep. six to eight months, basically. Or years. Or yeah. years. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or years. Or years sometimes. Um, and that's that's the truth. You know, like I think expectations are everything. When I was a personal trainer and you you would tell people, if you sat down with someone and was like, and you told them, hey, we're probably going to lose about 10 pounds your first, um, let's say your first month. And they lost nine pounds. They would be like, at the end of that month, they'd be disappointed. They'd be like, oh man, I only lost nine pounds, right? But if you sat them down and you told them, hey, you know, this, let's just not focus on the scale. It's just like uh, more focus on other things. And they lost nine pounds. They would be elated. They would be like, oh my gosh, I lost nine pounds. And you'd be high fiving and jumping around. <laughs> everything is about everything is about those expectations, right? So like, I very firmly when I'm teaching people this stuff, like I don't want to give you like ideals or, or impressions that like, this is just going to be going swimmingly. It, it does go swimmingly for some people, but for some people it's more of a slog and you just got to be like honest about that. So I did want to talk just outside of like an avatar. So it's clear that you need to have someone you're specifically focused on. And, um, that's been like the, I think that's the fun part is really sorting that out. Um, after that, it's like, how are you sort of diving in and targeting like, I guess a specific, like, do you have to be super niche? I think this is something Jay and I always battle with because y there are things that can't be so like, like we have friends that we just had on here that all they do is RVing, right? So they, they just dig in and they're blowing up because they're so singularly focused. Is there a way to have these things go, but have them be broad? So I feel like you can start it one of two ways. So like that, all right. So if you're talking about a, um, an avatar, right? So like, let's say we're talking about um, a mom who I'm just going to talk about the avocado mom. It's kind of like my mom, to be honest, you know, she's like in the uh, 45 to 65 demographic, um, kind of interested in losing weight, uh, interested in being healthy. So what you can do is you can create topics around a blog or sorry, around a broad um, section of what she's interested in, right? Cause she's got a bunch of interests. So one of those things is like re recipes, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing is workouts. Another thing is yoga. Another thing is, um, uh, you know, weightlifting maybe, you know, like you can create it all around those different things. So you can create it all around these different um, subsections of what they're interested in. Okay. And then you can narrow down later on. So when people are like reading your articles and they're like, wow, I really like your take on yoga. This is exactly what happened with avocado. Um, people really liked our take on yoga. We realized, okay, we need to create more yoga content. Um, so you don't have to be like so, so specific at the beginning as long as your target person is in mind. Because they, they, your target person probably has a bunch of different interests, just like you have different interests. Yeah, and there's probably something to be said for like getting too niche in some in some genres. Like I feel like an exercise of like all you're focusing on is yoga, you're a different kind of site. Like you're just, that's very different. You're just doing right. yoga. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, you're just like a yoga website at the, yeah. at, that, uh, at the end of that. So yeah. like, like along those lines, and this is something we spoke about, I guess, a few weeks or a month ago. Along those lines, how do you keep like how do you keep the excitement in it? Because after a while, no matter how stoked you are on football or yoga or beer or whatever you're blogging about, at some point you're like, I'm so effing sick of blogging about beer and abs and whatever else, right? So do you, yeah. d does like the personal trainer side of you come out then and and, and yell at you, like yell at yourself and be like, "Come on, you girly man, just keep writing." Like, <laughs> how, how do you keep through that and and still be excited about it? Uh, it's really a lot of chest beating and a lot of uh, yeah. uh, bench pressing, and that's, <laughs> that's the secret. <laughs> no, the I think uh, to keep the things that you do fresh, um, a lot of what I do is by having different projects that I work on. So I. We have like something called the health nerd. There's um, avocado. There is create and go. There is wander. These are all four different things and four different projects. And there's even another one um, that I work on. Uh, and that's what I need to keep things fresh. Um, you know, so if you are creating a blog and let's, you know, and you're getting sick of creating the content, um, find a different medium and a different outlet that can also benefit you. I think that's, I think that's sort of, that's been my solution. And it's actually worked very well for keeping me uh, stimulated on something because what will happen is um, I will, you know, create, you know, a travel video on Wander and then I will circle back 
to create and go and be like, oh man, I do miss some of the, uh, the more technical writing and the, the positive feedback we get from our customers and stuff like that. So it's like, I think actually having different like outlets is actually a good idea. Okay. But it's just, it's what's, it's what's worked for me. So Alex, I want to jump back a little bit because I feel like, so Jay and I both have very different backgrounds, whereas like he was more raised by an entrepreneur. For me, it was like my parents were, you know, my they were like nine to fivers. My mom was a nurse. My dad, you know, was, he had a regular job. So okay. for you, like, where does that background come from that you were like, I'm not going to get a corporate job? Like, let's talk about when you were younger and then go through, you know, what does your story look like? Yeah, so... Oh, mom and dad are both um, entrepreneurial in nature. Um, my dad has started a few businesses, still runs and manages those companies. I think he's tried to retire twice unsuccessfully. Um, so he's like, he's just, he's got that go juice that doesn't, doesn't ever end. He's 60, 67, 68. He's getting up there, but yeah. he's like, he's still like waking up early and grinding. He just loves it. Um, mom was similar entrepreneur. I mean, she, right now she's trying to start her own like real estate thing, buying houses. So there was always something of that in there. Um, the big defining thing for me though, was in 2010 and this is the most cliche thing. I think any entrepreneur has ever said at this point, but I read the four hour work week yeah. and yeah, I was like, one. Oh my gosh, there's a whole another world, you know, it's very, it's very mind opening. And it was very, cause I never felt growing up. I always felt a little bit, um, you know, different. I was like into sports and stuff like that. And so, you know, thankfully, uh, you know, being athletic in Texas, you get, you get a lot of friends like that, but i always did feel like a little bit, uh, I just wanted something, I wanted something a little bit different. It felt like, and, uh, the four hour work week was kind of like the, the gateway drug to that. So did you go to college or did you, you went to school in Texas? Yeah, I, went, I actually went to school at, uh, the university of Arkansas. Um, oh. So, yeah, I loved it. It's a beautiful, beautiful town out there. So the four hour work week was a great book for me to stumble upon also. And I think it's a common misconception that Tim Ferriss actually often corrects is that people think, oh, you know, you're going to have this dream lifestyle and you're going to have all these passive businesses running and you only have to work four hours a week. And he has made clarification on that so many times that it's more about like that he considers the work, the really hard, sucky stuff that you hate. You're still going to be working, but it might not necessarily feel like work. And can you talk about that, about how, I don't know, like what did that book do for you? For me, it, it kind of told me that you really have to leverage and delegate, but it's not like you're just going to be sitting under a palm tree with like a coconut and chilling. You really have to keep hustling and working. You know, have you, have you ever brought a laptop to a beach before? It's awful. Probably. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah really probably. not enjoyable. No. <laughs> no, it's not. There's sand everywhere. You're like, there's no Wi-Fi here. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't see your screen. No, it's a nightmare. Yeah, you can't see your screen, the, the sun. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not uh, – it's funny because that feels like the ultimate idealization of success, right? You know, like I'm on my laptop on the beach. Yeah. Um, the, I couldn't agree more, man. I think what Tim was getting at and what he gets shit on so much for that. And I just think it's hilarious because it's like, you know, the book at the people forget like books are applicable at the time that they're written and the time that you read them. So like he wrote that back in like 2010, probably earlier. Yeah. Like earlier. that was like some like earth shattering stuff on like, Hey, you can outsource this. Look at all these like different things that you can do. Um, but yeah, I think, I think what it just opened up more of my mind to like, what is, what is possible. And so like, we don't live a four hour work week at all. Um, but, every, but here's the deal. I like working and, um, I like working on the projects that I'm working on and the ones that they don't, I'm getting much better at delegating to other people. Um, and then every day is my own, you know, like I wake up whenever I want to wake up and then I, um, go to bed when I want to go to bed. Those are the, those are the big things, you know, for yeah. me um, when I got started, to be honest. Yeah. Having the flexibility is really important. Yeah. Being stuck. There's like nothing more motivating than having your current job. Have you stuck to a 5 a.m. wake up? That's like not cool. Oh, <laughs> so I have, man, a, I have a, sure. uh, I want to revisit your poop phase. So yeah. um, in, in doing my <laughs> Alex Nerney homework, I saw somewhere that you mentioned that it's very important to you as it is to us to constantly be a learner and to constantly be improving and, you know, constantly improving your chops in a lot of different areas. So 
do you find that it's necessary and and even enjoyable to jump back into a, a poop phase of a different medium or a different activity, or do you like now that you're in more of a comfort comfort phase and just scaling and growing? Which is more? Where do you spend more time in? Do you think? I actually probably spend a lot of time in the scaling phase, but there are different aspects of my life where that that poop phase is so important. So I actually just bought a motorcycle and um, I have never ridden. And so it's like, I'm back into that, you know, and it's so it's applicable, not to just internet business, it's applicable to anything you do. Like I'm back in like the whole, like, I want to learn how the mechanics work and like really dive in on something that I don't know a lot about. Um, so I, I, I spend it a lot in outside activities, but I, you know, there's something coming up for me, um, with webinars where I'm going to start doing webinars and, um, start using that as a medium to reach new people. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm back in the poop phase, man, of like, I know nothing. Uh, and so like, it's, it's kind of it's nice, isn't it? To like kind of jump back yeah. and be a beginner and throw yourself into that. Yeah, for sure. It, it's a lot of fun because there's, there's a lot of opportunity in it, you know, like, and then I think one of the cool things is you can kind of start to take the experiences you have, you know, and then apply them to this new thing. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, that's a lot of fun for me. Like, do you feel the same way? Jay? Yeah, totally. I like really thrive. It's probably not the healthiest thing about me, but I really love learning new, completely new things. Like even with the podcast, like teaching myself like audio engineering. I don't know the first thing about it and I had to yeah. relearn it and I'm teaching myself piano and I constantly love jumping back into the beginner like student phase because I, I find it really helps in other areas as well. You know what I mean? I agree. I, I yeah. agree. No, that's really cool. I, I, I think it's applicable to all things, you know, like I was learning the other day on why I shouldn't be drilling um, holes in my wall near <laughs> piping <laughs> like i, I could have told you that <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was like and i started doing all this research and i was like wow i have learned a lot on where not to drum but i love that stuff man like i just i dig it we have a bathroom demo if you want to come learn, learn that <laughs> real quick <laughs> so jay i take my sleep very seriously you know that i know this, this yes is true don't mess with chelsea's sleep <laughs> and here's the thing is that i'm a birth driller so it's actually kind of funny because you don't get much sleep anyway i'm getting sleep it's really kind of crazy the game changer for me for getting back into a really good sleep cycle has been dun, dun, dun. cbd oil for You're sure down with cbd <laughs> so jay did some due diligence and found a absolutely well-known actually right and very phenomenal well-known brand. company that decided to actually partner with us which we're excited about Super excited. And Charlotte's like, web. What a better fit for our first full-time affiliate, right? Like full yeah, on. We're both stoked. We've been using CBD for, um, I don't know, like half a year or a year. I had probably coming time. up to a year. Yeah. But it actually gets me like really back into the exact flow of sleep that I need. And I use it to not be such a uh, stressful husband. As you can tell, <laughs> <laughs> it does actually help though. I have a lot of everyday stress from from work and from being a dad and I find that it does kind of take the edge off. Yeah, so we've got some links and some um, codes for you guys. Yeah, so if you guys are interested in checking out Charlotte's Web CBD, you can go to jalders.com slash CBD. That's going to get you 10% off everything except for the bulk and the original. And we have to say this, and I'm saying this in italics, that everything we've said has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. And none of this is intended to diagnose, treat, or cure, or prevent any diseases so we are not doctors we don't play them on the podcast once again that's jalders.com slash cbd don't forget to use code alders for 10 percent off that's spelled a-l-d-e-r-s <laughs> alex i want you to chime in on some stuff you touched upon with the four-hour work week delegation leveraging systems protocols things of that sort so now that you're established and you have multiple successful things happening that are on somewhat, I would imagine, autopilot. Can you talk about what that looks like now and what the beginning phases of sort of getting everything structured and in place looks like for people? Like I know like for myself and Shels, we're still in like the beginner phase of trying to get a small like VA team set up. We're still at the beginning phases of like figuring out how to get everything structured. And can you talk about those sorts of things? Not for sure. So for a while, Lauren, Lauren and I just operated on this like just craziness where it would just be like throw everything against the wall and figure it out. Um, 
And I think that's kind of good at the beginning, especially because like there are just certain things like learning WordPress that are a pain in the ass. Oh God, it's like, such a pain in the ass. <laughs> it's awful. Nobody, nobody likes it. Um, and for good reason, but it's like one of those things, like once you have the skill set of at least knowing how to navigate it properly, like you can speed up through like problems and then like having people and uh, back there operating on it and stuff like that, you can kind of um, understand what they're doing. So I think, uh, I think there's some value um, in actually learning the stuff and not delegating everything immediately. But I think once you get to the point of like, I know this somewhat competently, like delegating out those things that you hate are, are really important. So um, a big way to scale, and just this is honestly something we are just learning, some of the best tools and tricks for doing this. A big one is the use of Slack uh, and Asana. Um, pairing those two things together um, with a team has been really, really valuable for us. Can you tell me how you use, this is just totally personal, but how do you exactly use Slack, yes. not how do you use it, not a tutorial, but like how do you personally use Slack with Asana? My, oh, um, we like, what do, what do you mean exactly? So like, like you're using it so everyone can contribute, right? And then, right. so do you have a large team? So I we have a team of like four and I just find we're all, everyone struggles with staying, like it's everything, everyone prefers just being on email and copying emails. So how did you kind of transfer everyone into using that? I just, I every time someone emails me, I I put them in slack okay <laughs> Force, forcefully is the answer For, yeah a gentle force okay. where it's like a, a nudge of of hey man i didn't see like yesterday my ads guy you know i had messaged a bunch of things on slack and he hadn't responded it was just a nice gentle email nudge of like hey man have you seen those slack messages wink you know like <laughs> i think i think it's more like a you gotta like keep after like moving towards that that program that platform because you you know the whole of email yeah, you know, it's like it takes so much more time um, from you, um, and and Slack just makes it so great because it's all just in one one spot and location. We're still learning it though; like it's not what we have isn't perfect. But um, yeah, I just find it's a big adjustment period. I think is the thing, and I just feel like I am having people lose things in email, so I want it there. But getting people, I guess it's just a training problem. So for people sense. listening, yeah. Slack is like for uh, communications, organizing group communications, and Asana is more like a to-do action item type of an app, right? Which you can sync together, yeah. yeah. So the Asana can be inside the Slack if you totally. Want it so to. so here's here's one thing that I I view it as like uh, it's same thing with like learning like WordPress. Uh, I think they I think they're kind of similar. Um, when learning like these new big skills, I just focus more on like doing it right a little bit every day. Yeah. Um, and then like eventually it falls in on itself, you know, and, and eventually everything's operating on there. Um, if you try to learn all of WordPress in a day, you will stress yourself out. Like yeah. at least I will, I would be, I'd be overwhelmed. And I know frustrated. WordPress really well and it still stresses me the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the amount of time I spend configuring plugins and figuring out what's conflicting with what and, yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because I just had a friend who was like, can you just help me set it up? Like you do all your websites. And I'm like, it's literally, I'm at, like, I'm at max <laughs> capacity on my own shit. Like there's no way that I could even explain what I know. It's very interesting with WordPress. You can fall you into your own for me? Like, Yeah, exactly. No, no biggie. Yeah. So, sorry. So what else is your, your, let's talk about software first. So what, as we're talking about this now, so what other kinds of software things make this easy for you? So there's, um, I'm going to give a new shout out to a new one because this is what, a, what? <laughs> this is a, this is like a badass software. Okay. Uh, it's called Frame.io. Um, maybe everybody else uses it, but me. But holy shit! Really? If you edit videos and work with a video editor okay. at all, this is the best software I've used. Um, just because they can upload the video and you can easily like timestamp, um, like change this, change that, um, go through here, go through that. If you work with video at any capacity, like okay. frame.io, like nailed it. Absolutely our, nailed it. Our like actual avatar is a very good friend of ours because he is like our perfect. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. He's totally, he just downloaded it right the second I know it. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's it. right I up his alley. Because it's like, oh my gosh. It, it just, every, it's just such a seamless process for uh, the editor. And, you know, like I know video editing stuff. Like I know how to work in Premiere and like how to, make edits and transitions and stuff like that. But working with a video editor, you know, the problem is this like this crazy, like back and forth stuff, but it like easily like timestamp, change this, 
timestamp change that they get it like directly to them. It's, it's just, it makes everything so much That's better. really cool. Um, well, so I want to ask you with all these projects that you have going on, like what is the project that's always been in the back of your head that's like, I, I want to do this one day when I have the time? Wander. Uh, Wander is our, our kind of our travel YouTube video thing. Uh, we, it was, it was really popular, but we, um, at the time, um, my, the person I partnered with it, um, Dale, actually, uh, Lauren's, uh, younger brother, okay. uh, we really like, we have a real great vibe. Um, we understand each other really well. We work, we work together really well. And Wander was like just this little project we did, um, where we produced a video on, um, a travel video in Peru and it just absolutely blew up. It got featured on like national Peruvian television and wow. like, um, it was just like a really cool experience. I love um, that video creation um, that has almost like no aim. A lot of what I have to do has like a direct aim. Um, and it was just like such a joyful and fun experience. Um, I would love to get to do more of that. And actually, I'm trying to focus on automating a lot of our businesses so I can kind of get back to that. So what is Wander all about? Just a travel YouTube channel? So it's a travel YouTube channel, but what I actually want to make it is, so you have all these, like, you have like a bunch of channels that are just like, here's me in Bali and here's me doing this stuff. And I think that's like dope. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not shitting on those people. It, But what I, what it, what it misses is this realization that like not everybody can live this life. Um, So I want to combine the two. I want to make something that's like, um, you know, it's about living a great life, but it's more like it teaches like also like here's the tactical ways that you do this. Here's how to build a website. Here's how to um, make money from that website. Here's how to uh, monetize that as well as here's how to live a balanced life. Here's how to um, create the things you want to create. Here's how to create the right time in your life. Here's how to organize it. Like I think I want to combine um, the... I, it's almost like saying the spiritual with the practical uh, in a way when it comes to um, that that topic or or just the topic of um, living a great life, honestly. It's like the carrot and the stick. Right? So is this like videos of you in like Peru or different places with a soft box flexing your abs or what can we look for in this? Uh, so mainly, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I can say or what I can't say. Oh, you can say anything oh, you want. You want. <laughs> Seems pretty fluid. Seems pretty, mainly porn. porn. Okay, oh, okay, good, good. Yeah. So lots mainly, of penis yeah. stuff. Here's Alex's penis in front of a palm tree. Here's Alex's <laughs> penis in front of a river. Yes, yes. Uh, looking like a palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Here's my penis dressed dressed up like a coconut. Okay, wow. I don't know how you would actually do that. It just would pop to my head. <laughs> we need to work on that, Jay. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to edit that back out. It's in a whole new website in the making right now. <laughs> So, all right. So let's get to, let's get to the juicy stuff. The money. Show me the money. Yeah. So, uh, where? Show me the money. Yeah. Where are people like yourself? Where is the most logical place to start making some cash with all of this? For sure, the best place. So, like, if you have a product or service, or let's say you have a special skill um, that the world needs, it, it could be anything. It could be your artistry or your music or. Uh, your particular way that you write are um, those things. Like the place that I would start, um, if you feel like you are ready to teach people stuff, would be to um, uh, you, know, you create something that educates people on what you do. I think that's the place where where to start because I think that that is where uh, most of the money is. Most of the money is in the, uh, the process of like, you have something that I would like to have, like teach me how you do it. Right. And I think that that is where people should start. Um, start by teaching. You can start on a blog. You can start um, uh, on emails. You can start uh, in any capacity. But that's where the money is. Now, there. Are, now, are you talking also? You want me to talk also about the specific ways? Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, when they hear you're making like six figures a month from a blog, their yeah. wheels are spinning, and they're like, "How the fuck is that possible? Like, where is the right. where is the income coming from?" Yeah. So it's, it's this, it's kind of this process of like, so let's, uh, let's rewind it a little bit. You know, we're talking about, we're talking about creating this content that people, um, need, right. So they come to your website and then your goal is to put them in a sort of like an educational funnel. So what you do is you, um, teach them something on your blog and then you collect an email and then you continue to teach them via email. 
and then you offer them a product or service or something that um, continues that process or continues them down that road of getting that thing that they want. So, you know, for avocado, it's like, you know, one of them's like weight loss, right? So it's, um, you know, we educate on like, you know, here are, you know, 10, you know, tips that actually work, you know, for losing weight or here's the supp- here's the truth about supplements for weight loss, you know, and someone comes to that article and then they can hop on our email list and then we educate them further down the road of like, here's the myths and here's the truths and here's these things. And then at the end of that process, we offer them our own product and our own service. Um, that's, that's the really like high level of it. So let's maybe get into the weeds a little bit, but not too complex. So we're talking about selling your own products or services, right? We have like other things that I I might throw out there are like ads, Mm -hmm. affiliate marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, what other sorts of like higher, like higher level, but you know, easy to understand things are, are bringing in dough. So I'd start, so depending on your journey and where you are right now, you want to start like on these levels. Um, the first level is like ads and sponsored posts, um, consider doing that. So like having ads on your website, um, you can also create sponsored posts. Um, there are places like blog dash, um, where you can, someone will pay you to write a piece of content and that's like the lower level, but maybe like, you know, you're a newbie at this and just want to know it's real, um, getting your feet wet sort of stuff. The next level is, uh, Amazon associates where you can partner with Amazon and link uh, to Amazon products online. So let's say you're in the, um, let's say you are in uh, the dog space or whatever, you're really interested in dogs. Uh, You can do like 10 best dog treats on Amazon. And then anybody who clicks a link and goes buys that dog treat will, you'll get a commission. Um, Leveling up further would be collecting emails and uh, marketing like higher priced affiliate marketing things. So again, Back to the dog blog example, someone is opting in to an email address and you're sending them kind of an automated series of emails, an automated thing of like, hey, how's it going? Here's uh, some myths about dogs. Here's some great things. Here's me and my dog, right? You were purpose of a blog. You want to connect with the other person. Um, And then um, through that process, you can then offer them, hey, here's this great uh, course on training your dog better you know, or training your dog to get a beer from the fridge. Here's this course on how to do it. Um, you know, and, and like, and, and do you tell them that course, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in that course if I had a dog, you know? So it's like, um, uh, teaching them that, um, or, or using that as like an affiliate product and then eventually kind of creating your own products and services and putting them in there. Um, that's where the lion's share of what we make comes from. So we're talking in the 80% of, you know, hundred grand a month, happens through that that exact process of someone reads a post, opts in for an email, and eventually gets sold a product. Okay. Is there some part of you that you're like, dude, I'm making so much dough. I, w- I just want to retire and not have to deal with all this crap on YouTube. Like, what is yeah. what is keeping you going? So I'm just thinking like in my financial situation, if I was making what you're making, I don't think I'd be doing that anymore. Tell me, tell me where you're at with this. Yeah, for sure, man. It's a great question. Uh, it's this one I haven't gotten, but this is a really good question. So the deal is, is that with Create and Go and with um, a, a couple of the other projects, they're like a few steps away from almost doubling what they do. Um, and so I totally get that mindset of like, why am I killing myself <laughs> trying to do this? Um, but if I get to that next step, uh, then it just levels up even more. Um, and then I'm, I, I, then I'm also in the process of automating it as well. But then Alex, after that step is another step. But then I could double it again. But then I could double month. it again. <laughs> yeah. So absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I know, I know where your mind's headed with that. And like, my mind has thought about that as well. Like, don't um, you want to just like work on your abs and teach dogs to get beer from the fridge instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd be great. Uh, you know, I, I think there's this, there's this combination of like, I, like to work. Um, but I only like to work for like a little bit of the day. Um, so what I'm trying to do is get it to like where I only work the mornings. So like I only work like a little bit in the morning on the things I really, really like. Yeah, that's And then the rest of the day is like dedicated to lazy bastard. (laughs) Well then, and so I, I guess then the gift that you give yourself is being able to have the creative space to do like wander and projects that you're like, these might not give me money right away, but I can have fun with them. Exactly. Exactly. So that's, that's the real goal is like, I really want to, Honestly, like one of the big things like that I want 
want to do. It's, it's not even a big thing. It's just something that I personally want to do is just create a YouTube channel that really helps like people, um, you know, just in general through all these process. Cause you know, while create and go is centered around a uh, blogging, I'd like to create something that was centered around like the whole, uh, encompassing thing of like what books to read, what, um, you know, what's the difference between, you know, someone who does the things that they're passionate about versus not like, should you follow your passion? Like these types of questions, I would love to uh, be helping young entrepreneurs and young uh, people coming up, come through because, you know, when I graduated, you know, as much as like I was fired up about things, I was lost, yeah. you know, I was totally lost. Everybody seemed to know what they wanted to do. And I was like, I'm going to go be a bouncer at a bar for a while. You know, <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't, uh, yeah, I just didn't know. So Alex, should you follow your passion? You should be doing your passion. You can do it one of two ways. I think you can either have it completely separate from where you make your money. So you can like separate the two or you should be okay with compromising some of your passion to make an income and putting, putting them in the same place. Well said. Um, so how, how do you know, how do people listening know the difference? They, they love this thing. And they want to make a living at it and maybe they haven't done it yet. And they don't realize that once they do it, it's going to be a lot less of that juicy passion when you're making a living from it. Where's, where's the line in the sand that you have to jump over? Trust, trust how you feel about it. So with Wander, um, there are ways to monetize Wander uh, that we looked into. And because I had already had another business as well, I was able to look at that and be like, I don't want to compromise that. Yeah. Um, so you, you got to trust your gut on saying like when you're starting to get into that realm of like, this is something like that's taking away my joy from the thing that I create, then you, you've realized like, okay, I can't, um, I can't turn this into a business as well or, or what I want to do and then separate the two have something that is like something solely focused on like, this is the thing this is my business and I treat it like my business. And then this is my passion and I treat it like my passion. Um, now I, that's not right for everybody. The, this is such a hard question to answer because for some people you are going to be able to mash the two together. Um, and it's just going to be a case by case basis. I know that's not the, that's not the answer that everybody wants to hear. But no, it like makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, I feel like case in point, like I'm a birth doula and I can only do so many births a month. So like I have to find other ways to monetize. And that's my passion, like being at births. And that's an easy thing to mash together to make it all a business, right? Like it makes a lot of sense to just mm -hmm. be birth focused. I love every part of it. But with Jay's stuff, he like loves painting. He doesn't necessarily always want to be a salesperson 24 seven. Well, He's more, good at more it. So I don't want to be, a, I don't want to be a WordPress developer more. Yes. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean like, yeah, you can make a lot of money. It's just a, it's more about um, building, you know, cause Tim back in four hour work week, like Tim, like kind of advocated for that. He's like, no, just create like the system, you know, and then go do tango in uh where was he? Brazil. Argentina. You know, I think like, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, and I, I kind of, I kind of agree where it's like, yeah, same with the guy who owns problogger.com, Darren Rouse. Uh, he talked about it at a conference. He like really actually loves like food. He loves like cooking. Um, but he runs like one of the biggest blogging like websites. Uh, and he was just like, I had to one day like just accept like that what I have created here is a business and what I am focused on here outside. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not food. It's photography. And what I've created outside here, I just want it to be, um, that thing that, uh, you know, that muse for my soul. Yeah. Can you tell us what your team looks like? Yeah. So we have uh, a smattering of uh, a smattering. smattering. Mm. Hey, yeah. Yeah. That's Is that your Texas word lingo or what are we doing with smattering? <laughs> <laughs> so my word of the day okay. app, you know, just pops up. <laughs> so the, it's a variety of freelancers. Um, one head, a uh, general virtual assistant uh, named Drew Duboff, who kind of takes care of most of our stuff. We have an ads expert. We have um, a couple writers. We are getting, we have video editor. We have more people coming on board. Um, they are mainly starting out in the freelance and customer service space, but then we, you know, once they're doing good work, we're, we're going to start transitioning into uh, getting some more people on, on full time. And what's your thoughts on, entrepreneurs listening i'll use myself myself as an example i would love to like build a team but they're very expensive what's yeah. your thoughts on hiring domestic where you can speak to them a lot easier communicate with them a lot easier 
as opposed to foreign, where you can find them at a price that maybe you can afford, but then you're dealing with other obstacles. Do you uh, have advice for a smaller business person who wants to build a team but doesn't necessarily have the money to get everyone at every level that they want? For sure. I would start with... um... I would start by outsourcing the things that like you, like, so for instance, let's say you're like, you know, you're an artist, uh, like you are Jay in like, and you need to work on your SEO and you're like, I fucking hate the SEO. SEO is like a technical task. So because it's like sort of technical, I would be okay with hiring somebody on the Philippines or something like that. Right. Um, but let's say it's something like writing. Writing is one of those things where if you want high quality writers, they have to be hundred percent native English speakers or let's say customer service. Like, I don't know if you've ever been on the customer oh, service man, with that's somebody the worst. who doesn't. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because they can speak the same language as you, but they can't speak the same language. Like they can understand what you're. You know, I get, so, I get a, on a, like a little personal pet peeve. I get so mad and not only at them, but at myself because I'm like, here I am getting pissed off at these people. Meanwhile, they probably speak like five languages. I speak one <laughs> and I'm saying, you know, and it's like, just like these scripts they have these people run through where you like tell them your problem and they're like, if I understand you, I'm going to re- like repeat the entire problem to you. And I'm like, just get to the freaking point. Just help me. <laughs> so, for yeah. sure. For sure. And, you know, the worst part is like they can, they can even repeat the same words that you're saying and not be speaking the same language. Right. And you're just like, this is the worst thing ever. So like, I think that of that for like customer service or for anything in our business, like obviously I'm never going to give that to anybody, but a true native English speaker, um, uh, somebody who can really... Uh, do that. Now, if it's a financial thing, you got to just focus on like, what's like the highest level, like most important thing for, for making more money. Um, so it depends for every business, but so for like us, like we sell courses and the success of our students from those courses is incredibly important. So one of the first things, um, for us to, um, outsource and outsource correctly, uh, was getting English speaking customer service people, who could really like help people with their problems. Um, you got to kind of be bottom line focused. So like only be outsourcing those things that directly impact that bottom line in a big way. Um, and that's where you got to start and build out. And then eventually you can just build out for all the things that, you know, you don't just generally like to do. Got it. So would you say, I don't know if you could even share this, if this is confidential, but do you do most of the writing yourself? Do you still do writing or is this more, are you more in the managerial phase, like guiding the writers and guiding the direction of the business? Yeah, for sure. Definitely moving towards the managerial phase. Um, still like, I, 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 the one thing I will never give up is like creative headlines. Like there is one for like, cause I think headlines are just so much fun to me cause they're short, but like you can be clever with them. Like one of them was like this keyword we're going after called blog design. I think one that I came up with was bodacious blog design, 17 examples that'll make you drool. Like okay. I just, I really get off on just creating headlines like that. So okay. like, I'm not, I'm not giving that to anybody. <laughs> Keeping all the drool to yourself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's that, that one's just for me, but the, you know, cause, and again, it also too depends on the article. So like if there's something technical, like let's say it's like keyword tools for bloggers. Um, that's, okay to outsource. You know, all right, there's not really much you can mess up there. You know, you're just researching the best keyword tools and putting them in an article. And then we can come through and uh, edit it with our own, our own flavor, our own uh, unique spice, if you will. So because of that, um, that I'm okay with. But if I was like, you know, if there's something like really like personal, like I wouldn't outsource it, you know? Yeah, got it. Well, so dude. cool, Alex. This has been like so informative. I feel like all I want to do is write right now. I like want to go awesome. back to the. I love it. I, love it. <laughs> I just want to make I mean, some dollar dollar bills, yeah. y'all. <laughs> <laughs> is there um is there anything else we didn't touch upon that you'd like to share with our audience, or any other uh, plugs you'd like to give for your products or services? Uh, you know, I I, I just like to say one thing. You know, like and something that I kind of say. Uh, it's just something that I say to our audience a lot, you know, like when I talk about the poop phase and like all that stuff, like it, it can, it's funny. It's funny because it's real and it's real and, and it's funny. It's uh, it's, it's something that everybody goes through and, you know, for a while, like as an entrepreneur, it did feel like um, waking up or, or going to bed, like with anxiety over like if it's going to work or not. Um, 
feeling almost like you got punched in the face um, because you try something and nobody bought and nobody um, got our service and nobody, you know, nobody did the things that I was hoping that would happen. Um, and my big encouragement would be like um, that it's the hardest because you're not, you haven't built up any skills and you're not getting any positive feedback. Um, but I just want to tell you like from one, from one bro to a, another bro or bro at uh, to just <laughs> keep going, you know, like it's like, it's one of those things where I am not the most talented human. Like I, I am not a great writer. Uh, regularly, Grammarly just tells me you, why are you doing this? Yeah, but like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where you can get enough momentum behind you when you build enough skills around it um, that you, you too can succeed. So, you know, just, just to keep going and giving like an encouraging word to those people would be um, it, where I would send them, uh, you know, createandgo.com is our website. It's where we teach people how to build a blogging business and escape the nine to five. If you are a writer or if you're interested in writing or just want to build a blog, like we'd love to help you. I'd love to have somebody else on the squad. Um, also have a YouTube channel, uh, create and go. Um, those are the, those are the main places where to find me. I know we can recommend the, the Pinterest classes. Yeah, well, they were very yeah. helpful. I appreciate yeah, we, it. We definitely would give a personal plug on that one. You were kind enough to share your Pinterest course with us over the past yeah. month. And my, just from following some of the simple stuff that you taught and some of the more in-depth mm-hmm. things, my Pinterest following went from 32,000 views to, I think it was 137,000 today. Hey, so, triple so, that's Thank what you, like Alex. So, so definitely you guys check that's... out Alex's courses for sure. Cause it's, he's, he's legit appreciate you man appreciate you pinterest traffic avalanche give it a give it a looky loo so should people uh be googling pictures from your softbox days uh, have any of that been, has that been leaked <laughs> uh, it's uh, pornhub.com uh, alex, alex Murray, and, nice. uh, and just see what happens okay <laughs> fair enough man <laughs> well thanks alex you're awesome bro we're really excited that we connected it was a great conversation and like i'm really excited to uh, continue our, our friendship and keep learning from you yeah, for sure. I got a lot to learn from you too, man. I, I appreciate you guys for having me. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. It's been definitely one of the uh, the funnest, if not the funnest podcast I've been on. Oh, so. All right. so much penis talk. Isn't it great? Just so It's wonderful. Yeah. Just to let it out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's great just letting the penis out there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's letting so it breathe freeing. a little bit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Thanks, Alex, bro. We'll talk to you soon, man. All right. Thanks, guys. See y'all. Just sit down. This is uh, I'm stretching my back. No, you're not. You look like you're gonna <laughs> poop. <laughs> you're standing. Yeah, because you don't. You took my chair. Oh well, here's your chair. No, I'm not gonna readjust my mic. All right. So, Alex. I'm like, is he so relatable right now to like the phase I'm in with my blog that it's like so refreshing to listen to? Oh man, it's funny you said that because I was like, what should I talk about in the outro? I was thinking, obviously the poop phase came up because that's just really funny yeah. and, and very accurate. No, but it's just so accurate. I mean, I don't know that it needs to be called the poop phase, but it does make I love sense. That. Well, it's yeah. like the uh, we always talk about Elizabeth Gilbert with the shit sandwich. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, like, you know, yeah, it's like just doing your paying your dues. It's really tough to just get all the material out there that you have in your brain and then work on getting it out into the world. It's like very complicated and yeah. he seems to understand it, but from like a very tactile and like. It's funny to shit. use the word tactile with poop phase. And yeah, I guess. You think this is related to that uh, conversation we had about millennials yesterday? Um, yeah, it's like the ongoing conversation this week. But do you think, all right, this is totally stereotypical, but do you think like millennials in general in the stereotypical sense just don't acknowledge the poop phase that work is supposed to be extremely hard and achieving these great things doesn't just okay so come i to think you. that they acknowledge it here's the thing is that i think that they are working the hardest they've ever worked when they are working i think there's a lot of millennials that are working their ass off but then it's like this i'm going only by the stereotypical no, 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 but i'm thing, saying right? they like, think they're working the hardest they've oh, ever worked oh in general got it yeah which but is like, probably accurate for them like it's right. relatively speaking so they're so what they were raised in or what they were right brought up through in our current system that's the way it is and i don't know i mean i think there's Parts of me that always, maybe that's the difference is like, I always think I'm lazy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Same here. Like we'll work 12 hours a day yeah. or back in the day we did at least. And then still think like, oh, I got nothing accomplished today. Yeah. I don't know. I, that fits in there somewhere. But, but then yeah. there's like the other side of it where it's like people like, like Guy and Kayla who are, I think they're millennials, right? Maybe. Yeah. They got it. Well, Tail whatever. End. Borderline. Anyway, people like that, that just are totally shattering this stereotype. Yeah, because they literally did hack it. Like, they figured out the way straight to it. So, 
I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, I think what we were covering in that millennial conversation was more so the like, um, oh, I'll do the work, but I require, here's a list of my requirements. Right. Like we were saying our friend's restaurant, the workers yeah. like demanded a, a break room. Yeah. It's even like, though there's no actual physical space for a break room. So I'm not, and not even that, but like you, what kind of break are you taking? You need a break room. Right. Like five minutes to pee and eat and like, yeah, let's go, get back go to smoke it. a cigarette outside, do your thing. I remember being a waitress and like, I would like sit in the freezer for a minute. And like that was like the only place I could hide. It's I did that like, too. I worked at Six Flags at a pizza place, and that just brought the memory back. Yeah, I was like, I worked my way up to be a manager at a at a pizza joint in Six Flags at, at the age of sixteen. And applause, guy, applause. Applause. Yeah, you applaud. could hold your applause, so guys. Applause. Yeah. Please, seriously, <laughs> seriously, stop applauding. But um, when you said the freezer, I I thought back that disgusting smell of the food yeah. and like i there's this one time before i quit where i saw these frozen things of mozzarella cheese that had like mold on the outside mm. of it and the, the, it sounds like six flags the senior manager above me was like oh no no it's fine it's fine it's spices i'm like are you serious like it's genuinely mold <laughs> so there was there was a little bit of conflict there but uh i think the work thing in general i mean we've been trying to find people to help to help us on our, our team and looking for freelancers to help and asking people, hey, we need some assistance. And it's been so hard to find people that are not flaky. Yeah. I mean, it's here's really what it comes down to is like they are trying to get every job they can. And then the minute they get a better one, they right. take it. They're so on the like, next thing. thank goodness we just found Kirsty. No I know we love you. Kirstie. Shout out to Kirsty. She's the best. Um, so anyway, the poop phase, I think that's a, a under spoken thing that is just genuinely true for all entrepreneurs but the other side of the poop phase is the other uh the other contrast to that is he was talking about keeping things fresh which is the exact opposite of the poop phase <laughs> keeping things fresh and then he was i liked the variety side of it yeah like you really need I feel to like, like i'm totally there now and the variety side is the only thing that's going to keep you excited which is the other side of it like yeah you're you're like think about it if the clientele coming to your blog or whatever is getting bored like how do you like i mean i mean if you're getting bored how do you think your yeah your customers are so i don't know it is it, and he really switches it up like all over the place so yeah from like soft porn uh ab shoots that really was only about <laughs> meal making it but. was just funny <laughs> yeah but i mean so it's much uh, penis uh, talk in this one. yeah sorry it's just you know we're from jersey it's gonna happen it has nothing to do with jersey he's from texas well we're dudes yeah, exactly. Dudes talk about penises. Yeah. But keeping things things fresh, I think that's an important one. I mean, uh, I think there's some truth to the fact that if you focus on just one thing, you're probably going to have better chances of succeeding, but like at what cost? Yeah. It has to kind of be like one topic and then fresh inside that topic in a sense. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, Alex's thing is awesome. I feel like um, even just in us over the past couple of weeks talking about him to friends, we've had a lot of people signing up for his Classes and online um, seminars with, or not, they're not called seminars, online, online courses. courses. Yeah, actually, I, I've been using his courses, and we actually, he um, made us affiliates of his courses. So I believe the link is jalders.com slash Alex Nerney. So it's Alex, N-E-R-N-E-Y. And that'll take you to his courses. You can do his Pinterest course. You can do his um, affiliate course, which is, I think is the one that we have a couple of people signing up for. Yeah, which the is blogging, cool. making money from blogging course, which is blogging. a good one. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for, there's a million people out there that do it. We just happen to have this like, very genuine conversation with Alex and really feel like he is the guy to go to. Yeah, so. He's legit. And uh, this conversation and my talks with him since then and before then really lit a fire under my ass. And I've been you know, getting, uh, building a little team and just trying to work smarter and look for ways to monetize. And, you know, for any artist listening or musicians listening, you really have to sort of be out there in, in a number of ways in order to make a living. And I'm, I'm no exception to that. I, uh, the podcast, my blog, you know, creative coaching, art, I'm trying to do a lot of different things, both to keep it fresh and also to make money. And that's important to uh, remember that, I think. Absolutely. All right, guys, I hope you love it and we want to hear about it um we will start reading more reviews on here we're getting you know we've gotten a little lazy about that but we want to hear more reviews on itunes so we can give you a shout out is it memorial day next week yep. yeah so we'll have an episode for you next week but we did want to wish those of you that are celebrating memorial day uh happy and a healthy and a safe one you should probably and, put a uh, sale up for memorial day i what should do probably think? do that yeah there should yeah. be an art sale keep an eye out for that one we're gonna stay on him for that yeah on a sad note uh, speaking of memorial day we i Recently, last week, lost a family friend. Uh, wanted to give prayers and love to the Gallego family. John uh, was was a friend that I grew up with. Uh, he was an older gentleman that was kind of like an uncle to me, and he was a veteran. And uh, it was a very honorable service um, yesterday that I went to. So, just wanted to send some love and good vibes to them. 
Awesome. All All right, guys. Take care. We love you. Thanks, guys. We hope you love that episode. Um, If you did love it and could give us some love on iTunes, that would be amazing. You can leave a review and we will give you a shout out at some point on this podcast. Also, if you guys can follow us on social media, we would love to hear from you. We are on pretty much every social media platform at Shifting Perceptions Podcast which is the same as our website, shiftingperceptionspodcast.com. We look and reply to all comments, so please share with your friends, tag us. We appreciate all the love. And don't forget that all of our guests also see all these comments, so I'm sure if you want to just have a space you can reach out, these are the places to do it. Um, We also want to give some love to our amazing photographer that has done all of our photos so far. Kevin Rigby. Kevin Rigby. Um, his website is wavelightstudio. LLC.com. Dot com. And also our really good friend, John Harvey, who did the music for our podcast. You can find him at Instagram at Harvey Wallbanger. So that's our uh, little rolling credits. We will be back next week. <laughs>